Hello, and welcome to Lionfish University's presentation of Lionfish 101, the top 10 questions about the lionfish invasion. Lionfish University is a nonprofit organization whose goal is to bring awareness to the public about one of the most devastating marine invasions in history, the lionfish in the Atlantic. You can find us on the web at lionfishuniversity.org and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. The first question you might be asking yourself is, why should I be concerned about lionfish? In other words, what are lionfish and why are they such a problem? Lionfish are relatively new inhabitants of coral reefs in the western Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, and Caribbean regions. There's no doubt that lionfish are beautiful creatures, but they don't belong here. They are native to the coral reefs of Asia and Australia. They are relatively uncommon on the Pacific reefs to which they are native. People there consider a lionfish sighting a rare treat, but they cover our Atlantic reefs. As voracious predators, lionfish dramatically reduce the numbers of native reef fish, thereby hurting local fisheries, recreational activities, and the health of ocean ecosystems. How did this all start, you might wonder? Because lionfish are such striking creatures, they are very popular as aquarium fish. Lionfish are captured live in Asia and shipped all over the world. Evidence suggests that pet owners on Florida's Atlantic coast released their lionfish into the wild as early as the 1980s. And there were eventually enough lionfish in the area to find one another, mate, and reproduce. It all boils down to one inescapable truth, that the lionfish invasion is a man-made problem. So what, you might ask, how bad could the addition of one more fish species on coral reefs be? First, let's take a look at the spread of invasive lionfish and where we find them today. This map shows with red dots where lionfish are established while the years tick off in the upper left-hand corner. What started slowly as isolated reports of lionfish off the coast of Florida in the late 1980s and early 1990s eventually took off at the beginning of the century. We see that lionfish followed the Gulf Stream north to Bermuda by 1999, then to Cape Hatteras by 2000. They spread to the warm, shallow waters of the Bahamas in 2004 and haven't looked back since. In the preceding 10 years, they established breeding populations in the Greater and Lesser Antilles, the Central and Southern American coasts, and the Gulf of Mexico. They recently reached the northern coast of Brazil and will continue their march south, only limited by cool water temperatures. You can see clearly on this map that the lionfish invasion is a concern for dozens of nations, millions of people, and billions of native fish that inhabit the same reefs. But not only are lionfish invasive on coral reefs at these locations, they're also found in coastal mangrove forests, in river estuaries, on man-made structures such as docks and shipwrecks, and at depths ranging from zero to over a thousand feet below the surface. Lionfish are truly remarkable creatures and frightening in their ability to adapt to new and diverse habitats. What has allowed lionfish to spread so quickly, fastly, and successfully? Lionfish spread not via movement of adult fish, but by the movement of their egg masses. Lionfish larvae are carried in ocean currents for up to a month before settling on a new reef, potentially hundreds of miles away from their parents. Once they reach their new home, Atlantic reef predators and parasites rarely attack them. They proceed to decimate native fish life, eating economically important species such as juvenile groupers and snappers, as well as ecologically important species such as parrotfishes. With fewer grazing parrotfish on the reef, we will see more seaweed and algae, which in turn smothers and kills corals. It's all connected. Coral reefs are being attacked from many fronts. Global warming, increased storm frequency, overfishing, coastal development, and now invasive lionfish in the Atlantic. Without healthy coastal ecosystems, fish are not the only losers. Humans, too, will lose services such as reef-derived anti-cancer medications, capture of carbon dioxide by seagrasses, attractive locations for dive tourism, coastal storm protection, a primary food source, and many, many more. What exactly are lionfish doing? What is it about them that is so harmful? One study done on small reefs in the Bahamas reported that a single lionfish could reduce the number of small fish by up to 90% in just five weeks. 
On larger reefs over longer times, many lionfish can turn a once bustling, diverse reef into something of a lionfish wasteland. In fact, lionfish have been aptly compared to the terminator of movie fame because they can overeat a prey species until it is locally extinct. Imagine all of the energy a lionfish can glean from this kind of free meal, energy that they can use to grow faster and reproduce more and more often. They begin mating after one year and release 20 to 30,000 eggs every four days. If you're quick with the math, that's over 2 million eggs per year, per female fish. No wonder our reefs are covered with these spiny intruders. Is there any hope? Luckily, yes. As a free diver or scuba diver, you can participate in lionfish derbies, single day competitions that collect and remove as many lionfish as possible. These local events are fun and effective because they train divers how to properly collect and handle lionfish, they provide samples for research, they help develop markets for lionfish fisheries, and they quickly remove large numbers of lionfish. After six years of hosting derbies, the organization called REEF, or the Reef Environmental Education Foundation, has removed 14,832 lionfish at four locations in Florida and the Bahamas. There is scientific evidence that culling lionfish by 75 to 90 percent allowed a rapid recovery of native fishes on heavily lionfish infested reefs in the Bahamas. According to one scientist, this shows that by creating safe havens or small pockets of reef where lionfish numbers are kept low, we can help native species recover, and we don't have to catch every lionfish to do it. Additionally, Dr. Tom Frazier was scientist at the Central Caribbean Marine Institute, published a report stating that lionfish removal efforts on Little Cayman provide, for the first time, compelling evidence that targeted removals can and do reduce the numbers and sizes of lionfish. In other words, culling works. Spearing lionfish is an easy way to remove them from reefs, but you might be wondering about what to do with that mohawk of pointy spines that defend them. What is the safest and best way to handle lionfish? Lionfish have 18 venomous spines, 13 on their back and 5 on their bellies, all of which can deliver painful stings. Many cases of lionfish stings are through incidental contact with dead lionfish, and therefore can be avoided with proper technique. First things first though, check on licensing regulations in the area where you are spearing. Next, seek out training and classes available through the Reef Environmental Education Foundation, PADI, or your local dive shop. When you're in the water, always dive with a buddy and have one person on the lookout for curious predators. Use a sturdy, puncture-proof containment unit, one for each person spearing lionfish. Killing a lionfish on your first shot takes practice, but it's essential to minimize both the pain felt by the fish and the odds that you will get hurt. Lionfish spines are a hazard even after the fish is speared, so have an appropriate plan for their disposal. Heat is the only thing that denatures the venom, so consider baking your lionfish spines before using them as toothpicks. Are lionfish hazardous to spear or handle? Yes. So what happens after you get stung? In case of a sting, immerse the affected body part in very hot water, 114 degrees Fahrenheit or 45 degrees Celsius, for 60 to 90 minutes. Ice packs will not work, except to reduce swelling after you have applied heat. If you do experience swelling, difficulty breathing, or necrosis of affected tissue, please seek medical care immediately. If you have Diver Alert Network Insurance, it does cover lionfish stings. So, Lionfish are venomous, but does that mean that they are poisonous too? Can I eat them? Lionfish are not poisonous, and just their spines are venomous. Their flesh is perfectly safe. Once their spines are removed, lionfish are like any other fish to prepare and cook. And they taste delicious. If you are concerned, please wear protective gloves while snipping off spines before you fillet the fish. Once again, lionfish fillets are 100% safe and delicious to eat. Grilled, baked, fried, or in sushi and ceviche, lionfish are a special treat. Their meat is light, white, and delicate, and takes seasoning very well. There's even a lionfish cookbook from the Reef Environmental Education Foundation. All proceeds further the work that Reef does to control this invasive species. 
Which brings us to our final question. What can I do as a non-diver to help? Well, because lionfish are so tasty, you can ask restaurants to add them to their menus. This increases demand to remove them from our oceans. Eating invasive lionfish is the ultimate eco-friendly choice. They're in constant supply, and it helps the environment. One more bonus question for those of you who would like to get more involved. What can you do? As we've already mentioned, there are a number of different organizations that are in need of helpers and who offer educational programs, materials, spearing classes, and practical tips. Contact the Reef Environmental Education Foundation, the Russ Recreational Underwater Sports Society, and us at Lionfish University. You can find all of these groups at their websites, listed here, and on Facebook. And all of these organizations would love to accept donations to the cause. Depending on your location, your local dive shop may also offer opportunities to get involved. Thank you to all of our co-authors of this presentation and to those who contributed graphics. Please contact us with any questions or comments you may have about this presentation or about lionfish in general. And a special thank you to our sponsors. And especially, thank you for taking the time to educate yourself about lionfish and what we can do to save our oceans.